on. And we'll go to our program guest now. It's the independent MP for New England, Tony Windsor, who joins us from Tamworth. Good morning. Welcome to the program. Uh, good morning, Barry. Uh, the Prime Minister is still short of the numbers that you'll need to get the, the flood levy through. Uh, what, what's troubling you about it? Well, I'm still uh, working through this. I, I have some difficulties with the imposition of a levy being the, the correct mechanism uh, to raise the money to help the, uh, the Queensland situation. Obviously, the money will come from somewhere <coughs> and eventually it will come from the taxpayer one way or the other. Uh, but for the life of me, I, uh, I can't understand why uh, some of the budgetary reductions couldn't be looked at or probably, preferably, in my case, uh, a deficit, a small deficit be run in terms of the budget. It seems to be this preoccupation with uh, being back in surplus by 2012-13 and uh, uh, I don't think that's necessarily the, the correct course. I think when a disaster like this comes along, there's very good reason to, uh, to slip into deficit. Well, if that's true then, if you think that she's doing this as, as a political imperative, um, how could you then support it in the end? Well, I'm not saying I'm supporting it. I'm, I'm thinking about the, the various alternatives that are there, but I, I'd have to say, to be, you know, to quite, be quite honest, that I'm not leaning towards it. I'm probably leaning against it. And would you agree, though, that it's um, probably, even though the government's going to lose votes along the way, this, this one is important. It, it's, it, sort of, it goes to the heart of their authority and their, their capability for doing things and getting things done. Yes, but this is a hung parliament, and, uh, and I have a vote within it. It's not, it won't be my vote that necessarily determines the outcomes of the government policy in this particular case, uh, but I have to think through my vote in relation to this particular issue, and uh, uh, that's my first concern. The uh, place it uh, puts the government uh, in terms of other votes is, uh, is not my direct concern at this particular moment. OK, Tony Abbott Tony recently suggested you should review your support for the government. You seem to be a, a bit offended by that, but, but it, doesn't it make sense to just periodically uh, just take a look at the situation, take a step back and th see how things are going? Well, I think uh, most people were doing that anyway, and I don't think we really needed uh, Tony's advice uh, in relation to that. I think he had another motive in mind. That, uh, uh, we've kissed and made up through the week. I had a meeting with Tony and... Uh, uh, we're, we're friends again. I don't think we're ever not friends, but uh, anyway, that, uh, that episode's over. Well, he said he had a very productive week. Perhaps that's what he was talking about, his, his conversation <laughs> with you. Um, after after, yeah, after, after uh, several months now, though, of the minority government, are you more or less persuaded that the government will run its full term? I think it will. Uh, I think it will. I think uh, people were saying prior uh, to Christmas that it would all be over by Christmas. Uh, they're not saying that now. The, uh, obviously, there's, uh, there'll be the politics of the day because the, the numbers are very tight. That's uh, by definition. So there will be the games played and the, the various media events run. Uh, but I think the, the government's putting itself in a position now where it's embarking on some long-term programs, the National Broadband Network, uh, the Murray-Darling uh, arrangements, you know, that's, a, that's a big thing in itself, the uh, climate change debate, there's, there's some pretty big topics out there and uh, on top of that we've got these spate of disasters that have occurred uh, right throughout Australia and uh, obviously that's taken the attention of the media and, and the nation, I think you could see that in the, uh, the footage that you had of the parliamentarians, a very, very emotional time for everybody and uh, uh, so there's a big year in front of us, so to answer your direct question, I, I think the uh, there's a very good chance the government will run its course. And, of course, if that happens, that's, that's in the interest of the independents, isn't it? Because that prolongs the period uh, during which you have considerable influence. Well, not necessarily. You know, people will argue that, that uh, if, you know, if there's cases of maladministration or corruption, uh, I'm sure all the crossbenchers would look uh, at those things very seriously. Uh, but I don't think we're, we're going to suddenly change the government, as Tony uh, Abbott uh, was uh, uh, suggesting on the back of uh, a flood levy. Uh, I think we've got to sort of think through those things uh, uh, independently of <coughs> what the government's particular position is. Uh, it's the parliament's position that counts, and, the, and this is a parliament of the people, not a parliament of the executive. So I think everybody's got to really adjust their sights a little bit in relation to this particular parliament. I, I, I think there's some fairly exciting times ahead. Hey, I want to ask you about the youth allowance. The Coalition has uh, sponsored a bill that boosts payments by uh, more than $300 million, and that's designed, of course, to give a better deal to uh, kids in the bush. Is that something you'd be tempted to uh, support? 
Well, I've been supportive of the... And I was very involved in this debate uh, <coughs> when it came up in the last parliament uh, and was involved with trying to get some sort of regional package uh, through one of the senators which, who walked away from it in the end. And I notice he's back in the game now talking about uh, uh, resurrecting uh, some of those uh, initiatives that were raised then. Uh, but I think we've got to look at the broader context here of uh, the legalities of it. Obviously, there's conflict between what the clerks of the Senate are saying and the clerks of the House of Representatives are saying. Uh, and I did I raised this with Tony Abbott as well, that uh, I think we've got to work out what this means in terms of the Parliament, uh, particularly the nature of this one, a hung Parliament, uh, and how an issue like this can be worked through. Uh, uh, if it can be worked through, I'd be in favour of the issue. If it can't, well, I think we've... Uh, you know, we've got to look at other means. Right, because Julia Gillard is, is adamant about it. She says that it's unconstitutional, that the, uh, the opposition cannot initiate money bills, and this involves money. Well, that's been my historical uh, knowledge of it, and I was in a hung parliament in New South Wales some years ago, and that was uh, the, uh, the rule back then. But some people are questioning the rule. Uh, the senator that introduced this particular piece of legislation is su suggesting it may well be a transfer from... Uh, the education fund uh, over a th three year period. Now, what that means in terms of the context uh, of appropriation and money bill, as we refer to it, that a, a, a member can't introduce a money bill other than a minister, uh, I'm not certain. And that's, that's, I want to get that point uh, cleared up before I get into the uh, substantive issue, because if that can happen, if a money bill can be introduced from anywhere, uh, obviously that has a much broader context in terms of uh, the budget and the economy. So you could, in theory at least, you could have an opposition that's arguing that the, gov the government should never go into uh, deficit, otherwise it would be contrary to its own uh, mantra, and uh, then uh, the opposition delivering bills, money bills into the parliament that drives the government of the day into deficit. So, and the consequent uncertainties that, uh, not only politically, but uh, economically, that could flow from that. I think we've got to look at it in that much broader context rather than just picking one bill and saying, this is a good idea, let's do it. Yeah, it's going to be an interesting one to watch. And on the Murray-Darling, and you're chairing the Parliamentary Committee, uh, of course, um, you, you, uh, Tony Abbott wants a postponement of the buybacks to save some money, and uh, with so much water about, um, that would appeal to a lot of people. Uh, well, everybody's got a view on it. Um, just through the, this week, the committee made some interim recommendations uh, to the minister, uh, one in relation to the buyback, not to taking it away altogether, but uh, removing it uh, from some of the irrigation districts uh, where what is called a uh, Swiss cheese of effect of the buyback is occurring. So it, it uh, has the, the consequence, of, uh, pretty complex, Barry, so I won't try and explain it, but it has the consequence of leaving what's called, a, called uh, stranded assets, running water past dry farms to get to wet farms. It really only applies in uh, these irrigation districts where they're, they're corporations. The, uh, I think what Tony Abbott is suggesting, that the buyback be removed uh, totally. Personally, I wouldn't agree with that. I think, in a, and our recommendation to the Minister was that it be used in a more strategic sense, uh, where it might be related to environmental icon sites or, or willing sellers that are outside... The, uh, these irrigation districts where you run into this problem with uh, a Swiss cheese effect. And, and as part of your uh, parliamentary inquiry, why are you opposed to, uh, to an investigation of the Water Act? Because you did say last October that it is a flawed piece of legislation. Yes, well, I think it's flawed for the reasons that some people have uh, identified. Uh, I know it's, it's an interesting diversion to question the Act, and the Act can be changed at any time. Uh, but uh, Some people were suggesting that our inquiry... Uh, in the terms of reference, include uh, the Act. Well, the whole politics and debate would have been about the Act then. What we've found, and we're on the road for nearly a fortnight in January, and it's an excellent committee, actually. The Liberal, Labor and uh, National people that are on it have all worked very effectively to together. But what we've found uh, is there's a few agri-political players suggesting it's all in the Act, uh, but in the main, the people and the communities are saying they want the uncertainty removed. And that, no one's saying there's not a problem out there. They're, they're arguing about the extent of the problem and how you rectify it. And there's ways and means of rectifying this problem that, uh, that are a, a fair way away from what the Murray-Darling Basin Authority uh, was talking about. So uh, there is a way through this. But, Barry, I'll just bring you back to the substantive point. 
five governments and oppositions, uh, the four states and the Commonwealth, John Howard, it was John Howard that introduced this Act, and Barnaby Joyce, who wants to uh, review the Act, had the balance of power in the Senate at the time. So there were five governments that agreed there was an issue in terms of the Murray-Darling system and five oppositions. And in fact, I think I was the only one who voted against it uh, in, in any of the parliaments. So, uh, but, but that says to me that, that the, the substantive problem is, is something that needs to be addressed uh, by those five parliaments. Now, we can tinker with the Act uh, any day of the week. We've done it since the Act was put in place. So, but I don't think it should become the main game. The main game are the issues that are in the Murray-Darling and the, and the secondary game, in my view, and, and probably just as, important, as importantly, are the people who live within it. And they were treated very, very shabbily okay. uh, by the Murray-Darling Basin Authority. And I think we can overcome a lot of those issues uh, through this committee and other processes. Well, we're out of time. But Tony Windsor, thanks for your time this morning. Thanks, Barry.